journalists joining us to look through the papers, Ash Sarkar and uh, Charlie Peters, student at Edinburgh University, and Ash is the senior editor at the independent media organisation Novara Media. Thank you both for coming to speak to us. Just want to start on that breaking news there, uh, the Conservative Party saying that this is not a U-turn or some sort of clarification about their promise that they made in their manifesto. Um, it sort of ties in to this whole issue of trust that we're talking about this morning, particularly with young voters. Charlie, what do you make about the party having to clarify what they meant in a manifesto? Well, I think it's a great policy and it's a shame that it's been delivered so badly. The communication between the public and, uh, and the party has been very poor on this. Um, and as Faisal was saying, it's, it's unprecedented in his experience for it to, uh, there to be a clarification between the manifesto and the election. I mean, it's a huge concern, I think, for young voters. We have terrible amounts of intergenerational inequality and uh, asking young taxpayers to subsidise social care for people who are very wealthy in the United Kingdom isn't acceptable. And I'm, I'm glad that they're doing this, but it's a shame that they've um, delivered it in such a poor way and communicated it so weakly. Ash, do you agree with that? Um, I disagree with that, unsurprisingly. Um, and the reason why is that Theresa May is known for U-turns, right? She's not the most consistent politician in the world. She performed a U-turn on Brexit and she performed a U-turn on the snap election. So why shouldn't it also be the case with social care? The problem with this policy is that the goalposts for what constitutes wealth for the Conservatives just keep shifting. So on the one hand, we're being told that £100,000 in assets is more than enough inheritance. On the other, inheritance tax thresholds are kind of being shifted up, right, so that the very richest can get away with paying that bit less. And I think what we see here is a failure to really tackle the problem at the root, which is a comprehensive system for funding health and social care. And it doesn't have to come from a kind of parasitic um, economic relation to young voters. We've got over three billion uncollected in corporate tax, right? Uncollected corporate tax. And we've got a health and social care funding gap of something around 2.6 billion. So it seems to me that we've got these avenues for revenue that are available, but a Conservative government and Conservative party that's unwilling to properly explore them. Let's talk a bit about personality politics then. Our young editors were saying there that it's becoming more about the people and the attacks on the individuals rather than the policies. Charlie, what do you make? Yeah, I, I think that's definitely the case. Um, Theresa May has attempted to turn this uh, election into her versus Jeremy Corbyn. It's, uh, it's every vote for me will improve my uh, uh, chances in the negotiations with the European Union. I don't feel as though uh, voters are really engaging with a Conservative Party, really. Uh, they're being asked to vote for Theresa May. And um, that's, that's, I mean, it's good for her. It's, it's good for Conservative voters because it means that, uh, you know, they can focus on the weakness of Labour, which is Jeremy Corbyn. Ash? I think the problem with this presentation of Theresa May is that it's... Um, almost asking for a, black, a blank check for an unprecedented concentration of power in the executive, which I think is really bad for any democracy. And saying what you like about Jeremy Corbyn, God knows, I often do, but he does connect very well with people when it's not mediated by the press. And I think then what we have to do is think about alternative ways in which we can get political messages out there, right? So not simply relying on mainstream or even independent media and start thinking about ways in which community organizing, right? Has seeing a political presence in your neighborhood can give you a sense of what political parties and candidates are really all about. I want to make sure I ask you both very quickly about tuition fees and what Labour have said this morning. Charlie, you're a student, you're in the middle of your studies. Mm -hmm. Under Labour's proposals, you would go back to university in September and stop paying. Yeah. Good idea? Uh, terrible idea. Very bad idea. I mean, I go to university in Scotland um, and Scotland has no tuition fees for Scottish students and it's the worst country in the United Kingdom for disadvantaged students. Yeah, well, it's, it's, the, it's, you know, it's the empirical truth. It's the worst, it's the worst country... Have about going back, mate. It's the worst country in, uh, in the UK for disadvantaged students getting to university. When you cut fees, you cut investment into education and then you, you weaken social mobility. Um, it's, it's unfortunate to ask workers to fund uh, tuition fees for people who can't afford to pay them. Ash? I reckon that any reform of higher education has to go hand in hand with the restructuring of the employment conditions that you then graduate into. So having a very skilled workforce who are burdened with debt, right, which is as it is now, over 50 grand often, um, then going into a workforce where they're not going to be able to earn more than, say, you know, £10 an hour, right, and they can only dream of kind of meeting the national median wage is 
clearly bananas. So I think you start with higher education and lessening that debt burden, but you also pay some attention to employment and the kind of opportunities that are available for people. And what's been shown time and time again is that by having a skilled, undebt burdened workforce means that you end up with better jobs and opportunities for everyone as you come out of it. Ash Charlie, thank you very much for coming to speak to us this morning. Appreciate your time. This is All Out Politics on Sky News. Coming up next.